uh, growing up, you and I and many other people, well, we asked ourselves, how did this happen? How did Hitler get the German people all to go along with this? They weren't all anti-Semites. They weren't all pro-authoritarian in the 20s. And all overnight, it seemed. And you see what happens. Things like COVID get to decentralize authoritarianism. It gets low status people who have nothing to show for it, a sense of power over their fellow man. It creates an outgroup. And now they feel like they're the good guys when they call the authorities to turn in their fellow countrymen. Uh, it was, yeah. That is the aspect that is very similar to the buildup in the 30s of, uh, of the Nazi regime. Warning. Censorship. Do you agree that you put some posts on Facebook? Does this look familiar? No, it's familiar? Not Yep. Did you put this on Facebook? Yep. So the question that's been raised is, were you there? Oh, I'm... Like, yeah. <laughs> is that you? Or... Well... Were you there? Well, does it matter? There you have it. Police in Australia, uh, there were a few swears spoken there. You know, I would find it very hard to swear that uh, rarely. If in the dead of night, dark out, masked police with firearms in their holsters came onto my front doorstep and asked me about my private Facebook post, my photos that I had uploaded at a peaceful protest months earlier, I think it would have been a full-time job for me not to swear. And although I'm Jewish myself and I don't believe in the profaning of the Holocaust, the trivialization of the Holocaust, I don't believe in lightly calling people Nazis because if everything is an act of Nazism, the Nazism no longer means much. But I have to say, the police we saw there in Australia, and I can tell you that is far from a unique example, increasingly resemble the political brutality that characterized so much of the Nazi regime. Well, one U.S. commentator who has a focus like a laser on police brutality and how it has become enabled and supercharged by the pandemic is our next guest, Michael Malice, author of the Anarchist Handbook and host of You're Welcome, a podcast on the Gas Digital Network. You can find it anywhere podcasts will be found. Michael Malice, thank you so much for joining us today. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much, Ezra. Uh, you know, I see your clips pop up here and there, and you take a very hard line on police. And I'll be honest with you. At first, I thought, no, you're going too far. You, you almost take a broad brush. You do take a broad brush to police. And I would call you anti-police. And I will be candid yes. at it. For the first 20 times I saw your clips, I thought, too much, too far. But it's harder and harder for me to cling to that when I see things like we just showed. How can you, how can police stay pro-police when they do and are forced to do and are happily do things like we just saw? They're not forced to do anything. How much money would Justin Trudeau have to pay you to knock on your neighbor's door and ask them where they were six months ago? How much money would um, Aaron O'Toole have to pay you to have a job where people snitch on their neighbors because they were at a protest and it's your role in the middle of the night to show up and knock on their door with a gun in your pocket. This has nothing to do with police corruption. This is the nature of policing in itself. Uh, conservatives historically have backed the blue. The blue does not back you. They back the state. And that is their only interest. And if you look, what's I, I'm going to get even more a little vulgar here. I'm not going to curse. But if you look at the affect of those two, there's no mind there. These aren't sophisticated people. People think in movies, the cops are like in the movies or TV shows. There's no one home when they're talking to this guy. They're just staring there blankly, repeating questions like a robot. Uh, so that is why so many people have correctly uh, increasingly felt an uh, enormous amount of contempt for the police around the world. Well, this is a difficult issue for me because I am in that category that you described. I am someone who, for the vast majority of my 49 years, would call myself not just pro-police, but wildly pro-police, almost unquestionably, almost, uh, y you know, they say a fanatic is someone who can't <laughs> change his mind and won't change the subject. I was almost unpersuadably pro-police, like almost no fact situation would make me move. But here I am 19 months into the pandemic and I have moved. And here's my worry, Michael, is at first, this kind of policing probably felt uncomfortable to a number of cops. 
Like, I mean, come on, going to a guy's house at midnight, asking about a Facebook post, that's got to be weird for anybody. But here we are 19 months later, and here's what I think happened. I'd love your thoughts on this. Any cops who found this uncomfortable have either left the force, been reassigned either by their own choosing or by a boss who sees they're hesitant, or they've just become accustomed to it. They're numb to it now. And this is the new normal. In fact, I put it to you, there are cops that positively love this, that are having the time of their lives, and that this is what they always dreamed of. And that the same people who would have volunteered to be brown shirts in the 30s, this is their hour. So I think things are worse than ever because the good cops have been weeded out or weeded themselves out and we're left with the bad cops or the cops who are numb. That's what I think. It's not worse than ever because Woodrow Wilson's era was worse, but it's getting there. So I'm also Jewish, um, but I would point out there is no law so obscene that the police would not be willing to enforce it up to and including the execution of innocent children. Um, There's been no pushback whatsoever on these things from the police. Very few of them have quit. And even regardless of COVID, uh, there's all sorts of situations where the police have been enforcing restrictions on freedom starting in America from Second Amendment rights uh, all through First Amendment rights in terms of the right to peacefully assemble. It is certainly, and I agree with your point, I'm glad you came around to my perspective, it very clearly attracts a certain kind of mindset. People who are low status and having that badge gives them position, a sense of status and a sense of power over other people. If you watch, uh, and if it was the 80s, uh, I would have sounded like a crazy person. But now that there's infinite videos on places like YouTube where you can see how police act, if they're the slightest bit challenged, many of them are very professional, many of them are very calm, absolutely. But a, a huge number of them know that they can get away with literal murder and feel empowered to be nasty and aggressive. And when you combine that with a very low level of intellect, it becomes a very dangerous situation. And the alternative would be to have market forces in policing, just as we need market forces in healthcare, market forces in education, and market forces with the production of food. Well, that's a very libertarian answer. I think that, um, you know, Market any government, hold on, let me say something. Any government monopoly, as you know, being a conservative, mm-hmm. leads to inefficiencies, leads to death, and leads to no uh, accountability on the force of the government monopoly. Mm-hmm. Security is a service like any other, and there's no reason for there to be a government monopoly on its services. Yeah. And let me just say one more thing you brought up, the, the, talking about the Holocaust. Uh, growing up, you and I and many other people, well, we asked ourselves, how did this happen? How did Hitler get the German people all to go along with this? They weren't all anti-Semites. They weren't all pro-authoritarian in the 20s. And all overnight, it seemed. And you see what happens. Things like COVID get to decentralize authoritarianism. It gets low-status people who have nothing to show for it, a sense of power over their fellow man. It creates an outgroup. And now they feel like they're the good guys when they call the authorities to turn in their fellow countrymen. Uh, it was, yeah. That is the aspect that is very similar to the buildup in the 30s of, uh, of the Nazi regime. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. you got to subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.